Hey, it's W5HRO. Well, I picked up this long needed, uh, uh, I don't know if you pronounce it, Syncor or Syncor. I used to work for a, a company in Tulsa years ago that was Syncor. Syncor was a, a division of theirs long, long time ago, back in, back in the early 80s, I think. I forget how many years ago it was. But uh, I've been going through testing a lot of my tubes. And uh, what I'm testing right now is I, uh, I'm testing. I found a whole bunch of uh, 7984s, pretty, pretty cheap. And they were supposed to all be new old stock. I've got like about eight. I got the eight, nine. I actually have like 10 of them. And I've already found two of them that had bad grid uh, G1 leakage. So I've been going through testing them. But what I found out is, this tester is really nice, but what I found out is, is that uh, uh, you have to let the filament sit there and get hot because a lot of people put them in these tube testers. Then they'll just do this, check for grid leakage. See how it comes up just a little bit? What I found is if you sit here and you let the tubes kind of burn in for about a half an hour, sometimes that grid leakage will come way up and it'll be in the bad the bad area, and I've already found, I've gone through, uh, I went through about, uh, how many did I go through? I went through one, two, I found four so far good ones out of about six, and I found two bad ones already, so I pulled those out, and I marked the boxes with that they have bad grid leakage, but uh, this one might be okay, so I'll have to see, but uh, then you check it for shorts, and you just rotate the switch around, and what this does is it checks all the pins. Yeah, so it'll, it'll bounce up once in a while when you're in between positions. Yeah, see, it's good. So I put it back on position 10. And then, you know, I'll just put it back here. And I'll leave it uh, at emission to see if the tube is good. It's good. But then I'm just going to let it sit here and burn in for about 20, 15, 20 minutes. It takes a little more, but about 15 minutes. And then sometimes that grid leakage will come way up. I found four out of six so far that are good. The only one of them came up just a little bit, maybe about there where we're still in good. The bottom scale is, is for the, the, uh, the leakage. But then I had two of them come all the way over to here, like where it's reading on the emission test on the grid leakage, so they were bad. But that's what I found out. These tubes have been sitting in the box, like, for probably 30, 40 years, and they haven't been used. And you got to let the filament sit there, and the tube has to get good and hot. You got to let it sit there. So a lot of people, beware when you buy stuff on eBay. People will get these tubes like this. They'll put them on their tester, and they'll just pop them in, click them around real fast. They say, yeah, they're good. But if you sit here and you let them burn in, the filament get hot to see what happens, sometimes you'll see things you'll miss by just plugging them in and changing them real fast, you know. So uh, you have to let the tube get warm like it would be using the application. Like right now, it's just barely warm. If I let it sit here for like 15, 20 minutes, it'll get good and hot, and that's when you'll see the problem. So that's what I found out. I was going through checking all my 6LF6s, and I think most of them are bad. I found a couple, but all of them, when you check the shorts, some of them, they come up. They're still in the good area. They come up a little bit, but even... Uh, the one that when you click it to the uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, what is not the cathode but yeah the cathode and the filament sometimes you'll see leakage to that or you'll see a short to that and I saw one or two of them come up a little bit then I had two of them that were just all the way up in the bad or leading I'll take it back there was one of them that came up in bad on the grid leakage and then one of them the shorts it was showing a bad short is what it was so anyway. So I got to go through back through. I think I found maybe a couple 6LF6s that are still good. I'm going to check those next. I'm going to put those back in. I'm going to get, I've got four more of these here that I'm checking. I want to see how good these are so I can weed out any bad ones. But this is a really nice tester. It's in pretty good shape. It's all original. But I'm going to, when I get a chance, I'm going to pull the thing out of here. I'll probably, whatever electrolytic capacitors are in, I'm going to change. I haven't even looked at it. It looks like nobody had ever touched it. So it's still an original uh, tester. But this one's nice. The only thing is that this one will do compactrons, but it won't do like the old four pin octal, say like 2A3s and stuff like that. 
it just won't it has a two volt filament or two and a half volt filament position but it won't it won't it doesn't have a four pin socket that's kind of what i found out i wanted one that would do four pins but to get one of those it won't do compactrons and that's kind of the trade-off and then there's some testers where you'll see it, it'll do the four pins, and it would have done compactrons, but they have a plug in the socket where a compactron tube was supposed to be. So they, I don't know whether you can modify some of those so they'll do compactrons or not, but uh, this one's really nice. And I've got an extra, I got two of the, uh, the, uh, the books for it, see? Tube setup for the uh, TC162 and the TC128 uh, hybrider. This one will also do transistors. These buttons here for doing transistors, which is nice. So I could do big, you know, TO3 package transistors if I wanted, or small ones. Or I could probably do, I don't know if I could do those germanium, those uh, PNP switching transistors or not for... Uh, for the vibrators, I might be able to test those. I'll have to play around with it, but I haven't even tried it. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna pull this thing out of here, probably clean all the contacts on all the switches, and probably change any electrolytics that are in there, and so make sure it's gonna be good for a long time. Cause this thing's really nice. It's a really nice looking uh, tester. So I'm glad I got it. I've been needing a tester for years, and I got it fairly cheap on eBay. So I'm pretty happy with it so far. At least it's working. So, I'm going to let, yeah, I think this too, this one's probably going to be okay, because normally the ones I found that went way over here with showed really bad grid leakage when they were on, when I go to grid leakage, it was coming up like to about there, so then it would just slowly creep up, but you have to let them, you know, warm up long enough, so I'm going to let this one sit to make sure it doesn't have a problem. I did find one of the uh, 12J b6 tubes the driver tubes that i was using in that palomar uh, linear that i've been trying to you know restore to get working so i can use it on 10 meters and uh it uh, the, the 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 original rca driver tube in there has a bad leakage short but you got to leave it on long enough that was probably one of the reasons why i was having a problem that was part of my problem too so that's all for now on this uh syncor syncor i always pronounced it syncor but maybe it's pronounced syncor I'm not sure of the actual, the way you pronounce the old company name, but they made a lot of stuff. I think the corporation's still around, but whether they make anything, I forget what they make. I think they, they're involved in some military stuff, if they even still exist. So that's all for now. This is uh, W5HRO, if I can get my call sign correct, with the uh, Syncor TC28 uh, tube and transistor checker, the hybrid model, 73s.